What is up, guys? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> What is up guys, Ben Allen back again with another video and today is part two of my Know Your MOS series going over 68 Whiskey. So we got Benjamin Broden, specialist type, who you guys have seen on this channel before and myself and we're going to be talking about the 68 Whiskey MOS. I already got the same questions written down that I did for my 25U video, pretty much asked the same thing, give you guys you know, some good insight on the MOS. But without further ado, let's get to it. Broaden, so welcome back to the channel, dude. I hope you're as excited to be here as I am. I'm pretty excited, yeah. No, you're not. I, no, had, to, I had to force him to be here. No, I'm playing. That's not true. But uh, anyway, I, I just... bribed. He, he's going to give me one of those t-shirts for free. Yeah, no, maybe. But uh, yeah, guys, so first question is, what does your job entail? So as a 68 Whiskey, pretty much what's your like day-to-day, -day, what do you do, and stuff like that. So the job pretty much just entails like looking after the, the medical well-being of your soldiers and not just that, you're kind of the um, like the mental well-being guy too because then you know they come to you for pretty much everything they, they really trust you. So you're, you're basically just looking after your soldiers on the day to day and then there's also a lot of like, uh, like medical readiness stuff that you got to do. Okay, yeah, it's pretty much right on the head, guys. We just got to take care of our dudes and medical readiness. You're going to find out that's a big deal in the Army. You're going to have to do your PHA, PDHA, you know, vision, hearing, all that fun stuff. And uh, you're going to have a lot of dudes coming to you to get that stuff figured out. When in reality, you're just kind of a gateway to get them there. You're not really the one that does that. But uh, yeah, so that's what more or less the job entails, the well-being of your soldiers. Uh, so, what advice do you have for incoming soldiers who plan to pursue your specific MOS? For incoming soldiers? Yeah, so like uh, people that are like talking to recruiters right now, thinking like, oh dude, I want to be a 68 Whiskey, that sounds cool. You know, what advice would you have for them coming in before they even, you know, go into basic and then come into AIT? Honestly, uh, what I wish I had done was actually get my EMT license um, before I joined the military. Because there's a program where if you already have your EMT license, you go to basic, and then once you get to AIT, you skip the first portion of AIT. Oh, and you come in as a specialist, so that's another bonus. Which is what? The first portion is like six weeks long, right? The NREMT yeah, portion? I want to say it is six weeks. Yeah, it's like it's six, six, six and two, right? Yeah. Six, no, it's longer than that. I think it was It's like six and a half, seven. I think whiskey is shorter than Whiskey EMT. is shorter than EMT. But the NREMT portion is like about six weeks, give or take, right? You know, a few days to a week. But uh, yeah, if you already come in as an NREMT, like you have that certification, then you get to skip that first portion and jump straight to the whiskey portion. So you're like cutting off a substantial amount of time from your, you know, the time you're going to be spending at Fort Sam Houston mm -hmm. as a 68 whiskey going through training because you would have already had most of it done. But uh, yeah, that's pretty good advice, guys. I would highly recommend if you have the option available, like to try and take some of those classes that will get you certified as an EMTB. Uh, it's definitely beneficial and it'll definitely help you out in your military career, save you some time. Um, so next question, how physically demanding is your MOS? That, that kind of depends on the situation. If you're like in garrison, not really doing anything, there's not a whole lot of physically demanding activities. I mean, we reorganize the warehouse like every other week yeah. so that's that's pretty strenuous but uh, unless you're in the field or doing like MOS specific training I wouldn't say the physical demand is that high but at the same time you want to keep in like peak physical readiness just in case something happens because if you know you're you're like downrange and something happens you're gonna have to drag out your buddy who weighs like 300 pounds with all this gear on yeah. So you just want to you want to keep that in mind. Um, even though you may not be doing much, you still need to make sure that you're taking your your physical training seriously and hitting the gym too. Yeah. So just to build off of that, I'd definitely say that it depends also on what kind of medic you are. So if you're like you know a healthcare specialist and you're working in the clinic, right, or you're working sick call and stuff like that, you know it's not going to be as physically demanding. You know you're also going to do PT the same. 
but uh, it, as opposed to being a line medic, where if you're attached to like say an infantry company, you know, you're gonna be like moving around a lot, especially if you're with the dismounts, you know, you're gonna be carrying like your bags, you know, you're gonna be carrying your weapon. And so that's a little more uh, physically strenuous than being like, you know, working sick call and being in the clinic type of deal like that. So I would just say overall be physically fit and just like, you know, be strong pretty much because you're gonna need it, you know, because you know, one day it could be like, oh yeah, hey, you're going to the line. So bam, you know, physical stuff. Line's the place to be though. It is, being a line medic is dope. It's uh, really, really fun. Uh, I'll make a separate video on that coming up in, uh, in the future. But uh, let me know guys, if you guys wanted to hear more about being a line medic, comment line medic down below and uh, let me know. So jumping to the next question, right? Uh, how could one better prepare for the requirements of your job? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> so regardless of your MOS, if you start like training physically before you even join the army, it's gonna give you a little bit of a leg up. So that, that's one consideration, but MOS specific for 68 Whiskey, I would say if you can get your hands on like an EMT um, uh, textbook and just start studying from that, mm -hmm. that'd be a good way to get ahead. Yeah, guys, or even like tactical combat casualty care books, you know, care books. I mean, like anything that you can read to get better at like anatomy, physiology, and things like that, they can give you the leg up once you get to like actual AIT, it would definitely help you. Because I went in there completely like clean slate, no medical experience prior. And uh, it was a learning curve, but you know, did it, got it, you know, completed it. But uh, had I known some of that stuff beforehand, it definitely would have helped out tremendously. And um, yeah, so next one is uh, how was AIT like for you? Ooh, um, so I, I'm kind of a special case. I had a really rough time in AIT. What company were you in, first of all? I was in Fox. Foxtrot. Yeah, Foxtrot. Before. Foxtrot. No, it, it was Foxtrot <laughs> before they became fucked up. Foxtrot. Oh yeah. So, yeah, we had a we had a really strong class, really high grades, good PT. Um, yeah, I had some like personal stuff come up during AIT, so it was it was pretty rough for me. I enjoyed my time there. Uh, I think I would have enjoyed it more if the circumstances were a little different. I uh, know I would have enjoyed it more if the circumstances were different. Okay. Um, but yeah, just something to consider is even though you're in the army, like life back home just keeps on going. So just be prepared. You know, I have that uh, it's the, the mental agility. You know, <laughs> the mental. You gotta you gotta hunt the good stuff. Yeah, hunt the good stuff. You guys will learn about that later. But uh, yeah, just to build off of that, guys. So first of all, I said fucked up Foxtrot because all the companies have like a little name that they have, right? Like Alpha Traz, right? Or Eight Up Alpha, Bitchy Bitchy Bravo. What's the? What's Charlie? It was. Uh, we call we call him Chewed Up Charlie. Yeah, Chewed right? Up Charlie, and then Dope as Shit Delta because Delta Dragons are always oh, awesome. Dumb dumb. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, what? It's Icky Icky Echo, and then. No, yeah, easy easy. Easy, easy, um, easy, easy, easy echo, and then fucked up box shot. Yeah, and then there's, there's golf. There's we golf, but that's where like the broken golf. people go. But uh, yeah, guys, comment down below what company you were in or like are going to. I want to know because you know that really determines how I think of y'all. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> nah. But uh, yeah, guys, so AIT, it's pretty dope. You get there. I believe they have drill sergeants now. When I mm. went through, it was just regular like platoon sergeants. So I think it's been upped up a little in terms of. Uh, like actual like intensity I guess you could say and then when I went through it was just two people to a room so you have that to look forward to but I do know some people had open bays of like 60 people so it just depends um, also what else the training was fun EMT phase was taught by civilians it was about six weeks long um, and also it was just more like book learning it was a big ass book EMT readiness if you guys have seen my other video with uh, another broad in not this one but uh, we talk about it as well. It's my cousin. Yeah, it's his cousin. And um, yeah, so pretty much like you go through, you learn like CPR, hands-on stuff, you know, regular civilian EMT stuff. And then once you graduate from that, you take the NREMT, which is pretty hard. If you guys want a video on how to study for the NREMT, let me know down in the comment section below and we'll make it happen. But uh, I was grateful enough to pass on my first try. I don't know about you. Yeah, pass first try. First try, yeah, but it really does get some people, guys. So you definitely want to be aware of that. And then once you pass that, you go on to the whiskey phase, which is more of the combat medic, you know, tactical casualty care stuff and um, fun stuff. the fun stuff, right? Like your bread and butter, like the stuff that you want to do as a combat medic. You're sticking people with IVs, you know, putting tourniquets on, all that, all that good shit. You know what I mean? 
But uh, yeah, you do that, and then uh, once you graduate whiskey phase, you go to Camp Bullis, which is pretty much like a two week long uh, field problem where you do all these different events, right? You, the first week is like walk phase, so you just, they're showing you what to do, and then the next week is like you're actually testing on all of these skills. And then after that, bam, graduation's here and you're having a good time and then you're ready to go to your first duty station. Usually they'll tell you where you're going for your first duty station, like uh, about two weeks before you actually graduate. So it just depends. But uh, that's pretty much what AIT was like for us. Uh, I had a good time at AIT. I think I knew where I was going before we went to Camp Bullock. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, knew, I knew too. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, so yeah, guys, that's AIT in a nutshell. If you have more questions about it, you can reference one of my older videos uh, talking about 68 whiskeys, or I can make a brand new one for you if you guys want. Let me know. Uh, so next one. Uh, if you could change your MOS, would you? Um, so I, I actually tried to reclass to 68 Charlie, which would be a, uh, a nurse. Um, unfortunately, they didn't have any classes, and I, I wasn't trying to reclass because I don't like my job. I actually love my job. It's the best job in the army but just as kind of um like a career move like I, I wanted to just kind of move up learn something different you know set me set myself up for when i get out of the army okay nice i like that me i like 68 whiskey as well 68 charlie is dope as well like that's the nursing specialist right mm -hmm. so yeah you definitely need to get to do a lot more hands-on stuff being that mos but uh, if I could change my MLS, I'd probably pick something with like public affairs, you know, where I get to use the channel and I get to use... That, that'd you know, be good for you, I, I would love that. That'd be dope. But um, yeah, guys, so a couple more questions here, then we'll wrap it up. What made you pick your MLS? I mean, they're, like, I'm, from the get-go, I knew I wanted to do something medical-related. Mm -hmm. So um, I actually, I tried to get an 18 x-ray at first. But uh, one of my ears is messed up, so I can't I can't mm -hmm. ever jump. Yeah. So I failed out uh, the uh, the flight physical, so I had to choose a different MOS. They almost gave me an uh, air traffic controller. Really? But I was like, wait a second. Uh, <laughs> I, need, I need more than like 20 minutes to think about this. So I went back home, thought about it, like 60 of whiskey, like they had already said something about it. Um, I went back into the the recruiting office, and he was like, yeah, we got 60 of whiskey. I was like, okay, cool. What's that? He's like, oh, it's a healthcare specialist. So, wow, that sounds kind of lame. It's like, well, it used to be called a combat medic. I was like, sign me up. <laughs> Damn, they got you. Yeah. You got him. Yeah. No, but uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing for me. Like, I knew coming into the military, like, I wanted to do something medical as well. So I was just like, you know, hey, healthcare specialist. One of my buddies had gotten it. I was like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I'll do that. And so that's why I picked my MOS. Uh, so. You already said you like your job, that was one of the other questions. So you guys know Rodden loves his job, you know I like my job. And um, so last question guys, what is the hardest part about being a 68 Whiskey? To you. Hardest so this part. is his opinion, not like a general consensus of every medic in the army, just his opinion alone. So in my opinion, um, hardest part of being a 68 Whiskey, you're kind of like, you get double tasked a lot as a 68 whiskey, especially when you're attached to another company. So it's kind of hard balancing, you know, you're in, like in my case, I'm in HHC, but I'm attached to another company and that other company has things that they want me to do. And then HHC has things that they want me to do. So you kind of have to learn how to, how to accomplish both missions. Yeah, yeah pretty much that's, that's what I would say to you, but I don't, I don't really mind that as much. Like to me, it's just part of the job. Yeah. Uh, I would say the hardest part about 68 Whiskey for me is just, you know, honestly, I don't know what would be the hardest part. Like, I like all the, the aspects. I would just say being up to date on all the new medical knowledge that comes yeah. out because they're constantly revising, uh, like, doctrine and all that stuff and all the training materials. Like, since I've been in, like, apparently they've changed some stuff, you know, that they teach in AIT, right? So it'd be cool to constantly be staying up to date on all that you know just get like a notification on my phone or something but sadly it doesn't work like that so you have to go hunt that stuff yourself and i would always say number one tip guys real quick if you want to be a good medic i highly recommend studying on your own because okay. most of the stuff that i've learned after aid has been completely like think like reading books right reading you know different um types of material to keep myself up to date because i've hardly ever been taught anything medical outside of AIT, like anything I wanted to learn, I had to look up on my own. So I really think that's what separates a good medic, you know, just from a regular medic. 
and um, it would definitely set you apart from your peers. I promise you, if you go out there and like study on your own when nobody tells you to, because and if you keep waiting for people to teach you things, it's probably never going to happen. So I highly recommend that you guys pick up a book, you guys you know refresh on things. Like I remember I was doing this field mission, you know there was some stuff about and it was a hot environment, so I was like, cool, you know, let me go back and refresh on heat casualties. You know, like what are the different signs? What am I looking for? And you know, you never be too good to go back and relearn something never get it in your mind like oh i'm the best medic around blah 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 like you know humble yourself and then just actually go and read and refresh because that's what's going to save your life you know your battle buddy's life and things like that you know what i mean so that's uh that's just a piece of advice for you guys you future medics out there or current medics i i highly recommend that the uh the books that you get during ait um the emt textbook yeah. and then also the the handouts that you get as part of the whiskey phase um, keep those. Yeah, keep like the, that, that's a wealth of information right there. Yeah, I still have all my books from yeah. AIT. Like, and I, I have, any books I find, I keep them too. The uh, have you do you have the um, what is it? Sixty eight whiskey fieldcraft or the combat medic fieldcraft book? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have the ALC one too. That's a, oh, you have the ALC. Yeah, one? I have. The, I have the next step to the one. I'm not even like in yet. I have the next yeah. step of that book because I found it. Let me borrow that sometime. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, yeah guys, so pretty much that's Know Your MOS 68 Whiskey Edition. I hope y'all like this video. I hope you guys like Broden coming on the channel to give his two cents, his advice on the MOS as well. You know, but um, I really hope you guys enjoy this video. So if you guys want to reach me, feel free to do so on my Instagram, Ben underscore Allen175. It's probably the best possible place to reach me. Uh, I answer all my DMs. I give advice. I post cool stories sometimes. And if you want, you can follow Broden at... No. Um, never mind, Broden doesn't want you all to know about it. So I really hope you guys like this video. And uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you aren't already. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Later.